allows for no comparison with another priest in my diocese. And not only that, that the way God loves me is enough. The way God loves me is enough. I don't need to lobby the love and support of others. It helps me as a human being. But if in the course of doing my duty and ministry, I also attract certain evils, we shall see in the course of our common reflection that it is also the way of grace for some. This first lecture or reflection is meant to be very brief uh, to help you fashion out the disposition in which you come here for the retreat. We have listened to the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verse 8 to 21. In chapter 18, Elijah, as a lone prophet, stands against many prophets of Baal and wins. Confident that he was fighting in place of Yahweh, Elijah employs favorably well-known manifestations of God's power. Fire, rainstorm, thunder, and so on and defeats the enemy to the humiliation of the adherents of Baal. In every circumstance, one can speak of a very successful ministry for Elijah. But he had to flee because Jezebel, uh, Jezebel wanted his head. He was directed to go to Mount Hebron, where he would meet God. In his encounter with Yahweh, Elijah is called to accept the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign to the ways that even he made us identify with him in earlier experiences, he can transcend that. There was first a windstorm, a wild wind, which rent the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before Yahweh. But Yahweh was not in the wind. After the storm, an earthquake, but Yahweh was not in the earthquake. After the fire, after the earthquake, a fire. These are the familiar forms known to Elijah with which the presence of Yahweh is identified. He had almost given up when in all those usual theophanies, Yahweh was not present. But then came the murmur of a gentle breeze, or in other versions of the Bible, a still small voice. God is not locked into a limited way or mood of appearing. Even in the unspectacular events of our life, God can choose to be present to us. And he can be present with a mission and a message we perhaps do not expect. 
Indeed, the voice of God can manifest itself to us in the silence of God. We may expect God to tell us something, but he can choose to be silent. And that could also be a message. If we take the message of Jesus' birth, the birth of a child to an unwed mother, amidst scandalous circumstances, or in the death of an innocent man on the cross, all these were messages of God. My dear brothers, coming for a retreat is coming to Horeb to meet God. After, I would say, a successful ministry the whole year through, in which some of you might have also experienced some disappointments, like Elijah. You fight for the Lord, and at times it looks like the Lord is not knowing that you are doing all this for him. And he is so silent. He is, the moments that people accuse you falsely and all of that, he doesn't manifest something immediately to let the people who molest you know that they are wrong. God is silent. The temptation is that when we have a retreat like this, we can come with clear programs. At least God must say something while he's silent in this area of my ministry where I expected him to confirm me. Don't come with clearly defined schemes in which you propose God will speak to you. You may have questions, you may have feelings, and so on, which are looking for answers from God by all means. These clearly defined schemes may be a wedge between you and God such that while he is speaking, you are not able to listen because your attention is focused on other questions which may not be important for God at the present moment. After a full year of pastoral work, this retreat should offer you the opportunity to listen to the Spirit on the many dimensions of the ministry to which you are called. And which, what you experienced this past year is only a limited vision. The experience of Elijah in chapter 18 may be likened to a traditional form of ministry. He confronts a powerful healer, a powerful leader, with his sins. He calls on people to be faithful to God's demands. He acts to convert others by the powerful word of God. In chapter 19, Elijah had to learn that fidelity to his mission may entail anointing pagan leaders to be instruments of Yahweh's anger and finally passing on the mantle of prophecy to Elisha, again to stress the sovereignty of God. Let us use this retreat to have God speak to us about our very personal relationship to Jesus. Not leaving the work aside, but let God tell us what our work means to him. 
Thirdly, God's relationship with us, we believe, is both important for us as well as for God. Honesty about the humanity of God's servants is also a challenge that we have to face in this retreat. We are human and we need to accept that in the relationship between us and God, the expressions of our humanity in any way, no matter how terribly we might have lagged behind in one thing or the other, provided we are still ready to walk along with God, these things do not matter. Because he's a merciful God and he's always looking out to have us close to him. Though Elijah has been blessed with much success, we see him ready to quit. We see him desperate. We see him resigned at the least reversal of the fortunes. He manifests all the signs of a burnout. One who used to speak of himself as standing before the Lord. We see him sleeping a lot in this passage. He complains, and one would even be tempted to say, sometimes he manifests suicidal tendencies. The work should not drive us that far. God loves us. That is a very important message. And that is the message very important for God. I love you. You are precious in my sight. We see Elijah being told to eat. He blames others for his situation. He is lonely. But very important, we don't see Yahweh blaming him for any of this. Yahweh doesn't blame him for all of this. So let us take it as a challenge and see whether a living and a loving relationship with our God cannot keep us out of these things, like a burnout. We suggest that our focus is more on the work and not the relationship with God. We must finish this by this time. We must be seen as a success in this or that matter. We are neglecting our care for ourselves and all these things. But do they really matter to God? Is God interested that we break down or that we commit suicide? Or that we cannot live with our own brothers because we see them are standing in the way of our success. Is this success which is so important for God or the relationship that we have with Him? Yahweh does not rebuke the prophet. On the contrary, he is called back to ministry. When he complains and he is on trying to quit, Yahweh tells him, go back, return to your way. And for Yahweh, returning to the way is the way of keeping the relationship with him alive. As I said, I wanted to be very brief. And the main point I want to stress is don't come with a program where God must speak. Make yourself available. Just listen. And I will say even this first day, try to rest as much as possible 
from your daily routine. Those that don't have to keep their mobile phones on, you switch them off. If you are expecting a very important call, okay. But otherwise, just be with the Lord. Listen to Him and be ready. Maybe the things that you think are so important, God may speak to you on other issues that indirectly will let you understand that what you are obsessed about doesn't really matter for God. As I said, in the first two days, I will be praying for you to experience God's love for you as a unique individual. And your knowledge of yourself as well. That God has created all of us great in one thing or the other. And we must convince ourselves the way we experience God's love. That the Accra Archdiocese would never be the same if I didn't become a priest in Accra. There is a contribution each and every one has to give. And if we focused on this contribution as God's way of loving me, it will give us the energy and the strength also to go through the other things, what we may call challenges or difficulties, which is part of our still being human and sharing a little bit also in the kingdom of the evil one. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.